This is Twit. You're back to talk about things that have happened in the Jitsi world since the last time you were on here. First, let's start with, uh, for people who didn't hear the previous show, that's show number uh, 162, if you want to pause this right now and go out and watch that. Um, for people that weren't on the other show, what, what is Jitsi itself, the, the, the initial thing that we talked about three years ago? And what's well, actually, changed since then? Right. I, I think you presented it very well. It's, um, it's an internet communicator that does audio and video. Um, one of the most important features in Jitsi, however, is uh, the fact that it's, it's entirely standards compliant. And it's also very secure. We do things like ZRDP that allow you to um, encrypt your communication in a way uh, well, people refer to that as end-to-end, -end, uh, meaning that you can be certain that no one in the middle is listening to you. Uh, it supports a number of protocols like SIP, XMPP, uh, which allows you to do chat over Gtalk as well, uh, connect to Facebook. It also supports a number of enterprise features, uh, querying an LDAP server, provisioning, even connecting to proprietary applications like Microsoft Outlook and uh, using your address book from there. So it's... Um, a really very advanced, very feature-rich communicator, um, but it's um, it's just a client. That's uh, I think an important distinction to make um, in view of what we have coming right now. So it's 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 a client like um, uh, like Thunderbird is a client for email and has to use an email service. Uh, Jitsi is a client for real-time communication and. Um, it has to, to use some sort of a real-time communication service. Now, with time, it has actually appeared that this is relatively challenging to to users. Um, they come and download Jitsi and they say, okay, so where do I connect, create a, a, a user account and name and a password? And then when we tell them, well, we have to pick a, you have to pick a SIP service or um, an XMPP service or install your own server wherever you want it to be. And they go like, what? Can we just, you know, like create a username and a password like on Skype? And um, well, no, you know, because you have to run your own server or use another server. It, it's very complex. It gets, maybe you can um, describe it. Maybe you can describe it as like, well, when you buy a cell phone, unless you activate it with a carrier, it's not any useful except as a brick. Yes, it, it's it, it's actually. Um, I mean, well, users they do they do get what they need to do. The problem is that um, the process of doing it is very is very complex. Think about it. Choosing your carrier, your mobile carrier, is a complex process, and you have to take a lot of things into into account. And there are only two or three per country, right? And and, and there are hundreds of web providers, mm -hmm. even thousands possibly, um, all with different uh, pros and cons, and uh, not all of them evaluated. And uh, it's a very complex procedure, and you can only uh, dedicate your time to so many things in a day. So um, uh, we've we've found out that this is probably one of the uh, one of the most significant blockers to adopting uh, the, to, to, to adopting Jitsi at the levels of um, the levels of Skype, for example, um, and uh, we were already thinking about uh, potentially hosting some sort of a default service that you can use in, if, in case you don't really have a, uh, a real good idea about what you want to do. But in, in the meantime, something else happened. So um, we actually now do a service uh, in order to present our most um, recent project, which is the Jitsi Video Bridge you mentioned, and, uh, and Jitsi Meet. Uh, 